Well, as usual, the eyes of the mixed martial arts world are fixed upon Patty, the Batty Pimplet, when he competes. And anytime you're able to win when you're not at your best, as was the case in his win over Jared Gordon, that's a feather in your cap. Pimplet back on the horse tonight. Win. Ultimately, that's what it's all about. And Patty Pimlet gets the job done. But listen to this arena. Listen to the reaction oh. that people give this young man when he steps from behind the curtain. This guy is a star. He has that star quality about him. But not only does he have that, he can fight. And ultimately, it's about winning fights. Patty Pimlet does that in spades. There are so many components to this Patty Pimlet package, the accent, the persona. But this is a very talented mixed martial artist out to prove as much yet again tonight. Well, you can argue this is the single hardest belt in the UFC to defend. The UFC's lightweight division has long been a murderer's row, and this champion's latest challenger looks like he could come through and upset the uppercut. We were talking to him the other day, and I asked him about the fight. He goes, DC, nothing surprises me, because every time I go in there, I fight the toughest, scariest opponent. I understand my opponent's good but I'm the champion for a reason, and I intend for it to stay that way. Seemed like he had a great training camp, a great weight cut, and even though there are definite stylistic challenges in front of him here tonight, told us on Thursday in the fighter meeting, skill for skill, I'm better than this, than this guy everywhere, and I'm gonna prove it in a big way in front of this capacity crowd tonight. Our tail of the tape now for this lightweight championship fight. All right, now to get us started, we go inside the octagon where we find Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Paddy! The Paddy! Good And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending, USC lightweight champion of the world, Charles the Bronx Oliveira. All right, Herb Dean, third man in the octagon for this one. Ready. All right, we'll see how it goes early in this round for the UFC lightweight champion, Charles Oliveira. He can beat you any number of ways. I don't have to tell most of this audience he is the most decorated finisher in UFC history and likely in pursuit of another one here tonight. Oh, just misses with the kick. Action here, Charles Oliveira pressing forward, guard high, in constant pursuit of his face. Yeah, classic Muay Thai man, lifting that knee to draw to reaction, and if you give him too big a reaction, he will start you with that beautiful left hook. The guy has, has tremendous power, and he sets up his strikes like not many guys in the UFC, or not many people in the UFC. Oh, he's got that submission locked in. This guy is so aware, he never leaves anything long to allow for himself to get subbed. Three minutes to go. This is not as dangerous as it used to be in fighting. You know, before, guys are trying to sit in that full guard. Right now, it's just more dangerous for you 
on top because guys have so many submissions that they can attempt from this position. And the referee brings the fight back to its feet. No surprise there. Needed to see more action. Oh, there's that low kick. That'll leave him up. opportunity here. He's going all in on his heel hook. He did a great job of getting here. Now he's got to secure his opponent if he wants to find a finish. Oh, what a move to escape. And now he's on the attack. Wow, that was tremendous. First escape, and then go right back on the offense. Oh, what a moment there. Right back to his feet. I thought he might get submitted there. Oh, I like that kick there. Oh, beautiful job to get the takedown late in the round. He is about as conditioned as it gets. He's not looking at the clock necessarily. He's not running clock all offense all the time. He knew he was going to wrestle, and he knew he was to wrestle early and often. Right now, this situation is often because he's, he's been attempting takedowns over and over again. He finally gets one as we get to the end of the round. That horn sounds oh. means we have reached the end of round one. All right, there's the horn, and what a round it was for him, D.C., and look at him walking back to that corner. He's feeling himself a little bit. Oh, he's feeling himself, and look at his coaches. They're all celebrating because they know that if they stay the course, if they do the exact same thing, they may be able to find the finish this time. All right, so he gets knocked down, but not out. Let's look back at some of the highlights, D.C., a huge round on the other side. He had him hurt very bad. He found the shot. He got exactly what he wanted. When he saw the opening, he jumped on it, and he hurt his opponent very bad. If he can get back to that one more time, he may end the night. You ready to fight? Ready. Go. All right, here we go with round two. I love watching Charles Oliveira fight. The way that he lifts to build out your read, to try to draw it out. And that leg goes up, your hand starts to drop like you think he's going to need you. He will pop you with the left hook. He has a well on skill set. He's one of the best fighters in the world, but also one of the funnest fighters that we get the opportunity to watch compete. Straight punch is true. Well, confidence is high. I repeat, confidence is high. And I got to think when you knock a fighter down in the previous round, that's going to think you can do it again. I mean, confidence is key in anything you do in regards to fighting. So, for him to secure that knockdown early, he has to feel good going forward. And both fighters exchange in the pocket. All right, so now we start to see some bruising appearing on the torso and all of that courtesy of the body work of his opponent. Just the, the wherewithal to go to the body and the discipline to stay with that opponent. Oh, oh. Right near the goal piece. Well, now these kicks are really starting to pile up since he found his range. This could be trouble. So a much different approach for him here in this second round. He was a little bit tentative in round one, a little bit of a feeling out process. What a great way of mixing up his attack. He didn't stay the course. He mixed it up. He went high with his opponent. And now he's got him hurt very bad. That leg kick hurt. A nice jab to the dome by Oliveira. Well, he rocked him, but couldn't finish it. He rocked him. He hurt him bad. He could find that one shot. Back and forth we go. These two guys are trading huge shots. Oh my goodness, what a fight. Under a minute to go now in round two. Oh, he did a great job of road 
rotating him into an underhook. Oh, and he tags him with the straight. Beautifully placed there. Great timing on that double leg. Oh, and he locks up a triangle. That looks tight, DC. It's very tight. And now he's just got to start passing the arm across. Pull it down. Coming up next. All right, heading back to the corner now, and we will keep a close eye on things. Pimlet's bleeding pretty bad from the forehead here. Hopefully the cut man can nip that in the bud and make sure that that blood doesn't trickle down into his eyes as the next round begins. All right, back to the stools between rounds, and I guess nothing a little Botox can't fix, but let us show you the replay and ultimately the strike that caused that significant damage to his forehead. I mean, his forehead, you, you don't see it very often. But even when BJ Penn kicked Diego Sanchez, the damage and the blood Ready, that fight. flies off the head Ready. whenever you get a head Go. kick to the head, it's, it's very difficult to deal with or get a cut on the forehead. He's got to change his approach now to really protect himself. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be compromising the vision as yet, but he will need to protect himself so it doesn't get worse here in the next round. Lands a nice leg kick. Right now they separate. Just over three minutes to go in round three. And now some distance as they pull apart. Back and forth we go. Well, it's all pace and pressure down the stretch. He is really lighting them up now. It's amazing. One calf kick can do so much damage. Starting to show some signs of bruising there. It's already starting to limit him. Big shot to the body. Got to the clinch, controlled the posture, and lands some big knees from in close. Oh, and he caught the kick. And now some separation. Under two minutes to go. Oliveira gets caught by that straight punch. Beautifully landed by the opposition. Ooh, another shot to the head. Throwing that jab. Oh, these ground strikes are just brutal. There it is. Now he's running him out. Pimblet's in half court. Right into side control. Oh, tight submission attempt now with the Darce. That Darce is tight. Submission D. Fifteen seconds to go. Really maximizing his shots here. All right, that's three rounds in the books. We are headed to the championship round. All right, there's the horn. What a round it was, DC. And, of course, the seminal moment, that big knockdown that nearly got his opponent out of there for good. Almost finished the fight, but now he needs to reset, right? Don't rush. Go back out into the next round and just try to find that shot again. If he rushes, if he overexerts himself, he will run out of energy and put himself at risk of losing the fight. Well, he had a lot more than a puncher's chance coming in. Big knockdown for him in the previous round. DC, talk us through the highlight. He got in his opponent's face landed that big punch that put his opponent flat on his back. He couldn't get the finish, but if he lands one more time just like that, he will get the victory. You ready? You ready? Go. We have arrived at the fourth round fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds. All right, 
fourth round is now underway as we get to the championship rounds. What is a fighter's mindset when you get to this 16th minute of the fight? This is when you understand that nothing is ever going to be hard. This is the hardest round of fighting. This is going to really test your will and your desire to become champion. Ladies and gentlemen, crowd absolutely loving it. Just a perfect shot to end the fight. Landed flush. I'm not even sure his opponent saw it coming. So a huge, huge win for that young fighter here tonight. is in the octagon with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at one minute, 26 seconds of round number four. Declaring the winner by knockout and new UFC lightweight champion of the world, Patty the Patty. Well, tier.